let's take a look at this case study, which is actually a compilation of two actual cases that I worked with in the public schools. First, let's read the case study. Donatus, a six-year-old, is struggling in his first grade classroom. Donatus will not remain on task to complete work, and when asked to follow his teacher's instructions, he will not comply. Often, he is not at his workspace. Instead, he is bothering other students and is in their space. He will play with his pencils or whatever he can find. He pushes other kids regularly and has been involved in altercations on the playground. He also has had meltdowns during music and art, usually precipitated by independent work. When confronted by the behavior management specialist, he hits and kicks and over the past three weeks has had to be restrained and placed into a padded behavior room to cool down. He hits and kicks the walls and it takes at least 10 minutes for him to calm down. Let's start with this first question, clearly define the problem behaviors. When we look at this case study, you need to ask yourself, okay, what behaviors do we really want to work with? What is the most important battle to pick right now? And a couple of things stand out. Donatus is not remaining on task to complete work, and so we need to clearly define this problem behavior. He's also being aggressive to other kids, pushing other kids, and he's having meltdowns. So he's got meltdowns going on, he's pushing other kids, and not remaining on task. Because he's not remaining on task, he's getting into some of these off-task behaviors. Clearly define the problem behavior. We want it to be specific. Remember, a dead man can't do it. So it needs to have active language. So after we would do a series of functional interviews and observations, we would have more specificity, such as, Donatus is off task in the classroom 80% of the time during music, during art, and say maybe math or reading are the other subjects we find data on that those are the ones that he's struggling the most with. And then we not, not remain on task is really kind of nebulous. So now we need to think about what does it look like? As we go back to the case study, he's moved to other people's spaces, he's not at his desk, he's playing with pencils and other objects, so we want to include that in what does it look to be off task uh, for Donatus. So the next major behaviors of concern are the pushing other children and so doing an outside observation um, on the playground or movement from one classroom to the next, we would want to see what does this look like? Is it pushing people in the back? Um, how often is it occurring? You know, what times of day? Um, we also want to define meltdowns, but we don't know what that is. Meltdowns can mean a lot of different things, so we have to ask the people around him and then as we observe, if we happen to observe a, a meltdown, specifically write what that looks like. Is he throwing himself on the floor? Is he screaming expletives? Is he um, crying? What does it actually look like? And so that would be a real specific statement defining what a meltdown is and how often it occurs and in what uh, settings it's occurring. So this question asks us to identify events, times, and situations that predict when these problem behaviors will and will not occur across the full range of typical routines. Remember, we're worried about task engagement and then physical pushing and then meltdowns. Really, meltdowns is emotional regulation. The pushing is some impulsivity and not doing his work is more related to inattention um, and also maybe is struggling academically and can't do the work. So as we're looking here, just from this small paragraph, we realize that, okay, he does okay in music, he does okay in, or he doesn't do okay in music, he doesn't do okay in art. Um, but what is missing is he must be doing okay in gym. If we were to do observations in his different classes, Maybe gym is a place where he's on task, even an independent type of activities. And so we need to start to sort this out. And so we will do that through the observations and the interviews. So the next question we start to ask ourselves as we note these behaviors that are occurring is what is maintaining the behavior? What are the consequences that the student's receiving? Donatus is not complying. He's asked to follow through with his task several times. He doesn't remain on task when he begins the task. So is it that 
he is really impulsive? Is there an attention issue getting in the way? Is he really struggling to even do the task and frustrated? And so this would be an example probably of escape, escape from the task. It's too challenging or hard or boring. I've had bright students who escape the task because they're so bored and they'll act out and do poor behaviors. And so the other thing I th think we should note here is he's not at his workspace that he's actually bothering other students. And with that, um, that means he's probably looking for attention. And then he's also having these altercations on the playground. And that's, again, he's looking for friendships. If we were to do more observations with him, and because I kind of know the background of these cases, he didn't have many friends on the playground. He was actually trying to reach out, and the ways that he was reaching out were not good friend-building skills, just trying to get their attention. So one of the last behaviors we were kind of concerned about were his meltdowns and like what function is that serving? Is he melting down uh, to get out of the classroom again to escape the work? Is he melting down for self-expression? I mean that's one idea we could think about. Or is it that he's just struggling um, to compose himself and he really needs some support and de-escalating his own emotions? So in this we don't know yet enough out of the example what the meltdowns are really about. We don't know the exact triggers before these, and this is just kind of illustrating the importance of doing those assessments and those interviews to find this out. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, this question asks us to develop one or more summary statements or hypotheses that describe the specific behavior this, and when it occurs, the specific type of situation in which it occurs, and what the outcomes are or the reinforcers maintaining that, um, those behaviors in that situation. So with the case of Donatus, I believe what we could say about him thus far is that Donatus is typically escaping the tasks of independent work, and he's doing this because the work is either too hard or he wants attention, affiliation with friends, or maybe he's also struggling with inattention. And 10 problems is too much for him to do. Maybe we need to shorten his independent work to five problems. So that would be like one summary statement that would work so far from what we know. But if you had done all of these assessments, you would have more information to build kind of your hypothesis um, and what outcomes or reinforcers are maintaining it so that you can start to think about replacement behaviors. The next question asks us to identify various methods of data collection you would use to support the hypothesis statement. So if we think that Donatus is acting out to escape work, what kinds of assessment strategies might we use? I think we definitely, for knowing on-task versus off-task engagement, we want to use the um, interval recording system. In a particular hour setting, how much of that time frame is he off task and bothering his neighbors playing with pencils? And so that would be a really good system to use. If we're talking about the meltdowns, then we would probably want to do more of the ABC chart where there's an antecedent, what's happening right before the meltdown, the behavior, describe what the meltdown looks, looks like really carefully, and then what's the consequence that we think is maintaining that. Um, and so the ABC chart would be important to do. An ABC chart in the, the playground would be great to capture the altercations, what's happening right before, what's after. And then the other thing, he seems to be having a lot of behaviors in general. So a scatter plot is something that'll show us more broadly what times of the day, what activities is he not doing some of these poor behaviors, but he's exhibiting great behaviors. And so we wanna catch him being good we want to know what are his strengths and what things he enjoys and when he is engaged in a task what that might be as well because those can be built in then as reinforcers if he does um, maintain attention during really hard tasks like math or reading. Here is just a, an example um, form of an ABC chart and as you look at this it's recording the date, time, and then what class the student may be in, what behaviors are occurring and what that looks like the antecedent, what's happening right before, or the setting events before the behavior occurs. The consequences, does the teacher ignore the student? Are they giving them attention? Are they redirecting them? Are other peers around them doing these functions? Um, and then what could be the possible function of this behavior? What is it getting for the student? What is it serving? And then if you're trying to just get a frequency count of certain behaviors, you can quickly just mark 
or, or check it off as to counting how many of those behaviors are occurring. The last question talks about what further questions would you ask in a functional analysis interview and who would you interview? I think in this case, you would definitely want to interview the parent or parents. If there's a particular para that's working with Donatus, obviously an intervention behavior specialist has been working with Donatus and has pulled him out of the classroom. I would want to talk to his regular ed teacher. They would have a lot of knowledge about when they see the behaviors occurring and what it looks like and times of day, and then more about his background and, um, and so forth. I would also want to talk to the music and the P, uh, PE teacher and the art teacher, all those specialist classrooms because he has such different reactions in those. Um, what kind of questions though would I ask these individuals? I'd really want to get at those specific questions of when, how often does it occur, what does it look like, what do they think he's getting out of it, and if there's any other setting events or triggers, are there kids that are egging him on? Are there some relationships in the classroom that might also be a trigger, a quick trigger? What are the slow triggers in his life? Is there poverty, um, access to good nutrition? Has he been moving from school to school? Is there mobility in his background? Which actually was an issue in this case. Um, and so those are kind of those long-term setting events that we will want to find out more about and can have some of those conversations with the teachers and the parent. And then to also talk about their strengths, right? Like that's one of the first questions we should ask them as well is what strengths do you see in Donatus? Because if we come together as um, a special ed team and meet with parents and talk through what's going on, we want to be on the same goal of what we want him to be doing well in the class, learning the material, and engaging um, more than 20% of the time, right? And so what is it about him can we draw out in the classroom? And then what kind of rewards would he like to work towards? That's a great question to ask him. Sometimes I ask the student themselves, would you like 10 minutes in the gym to play basketball? Uh, I worked with a student who was struggling with putting words together in sentences and to create a paragraph, and it was an eighth grade student who loved basketball, so we would grab a newspaper article from the news, we would read through it together, and then he would draft and put together three to four sentences about it, and then at the end of the school day, he'd come back and we'd head to the gym, um, and just he'd get those 10 minutes of freedom to play in the gym. So what is it that, you know, he wants what function does the student want and how can we appropriately get him those needs? If he needs attention, can we help him with a social skills group? Can we get him connected with a peer? Um, can we teach him directly some social skills scripts? Um, those are the things that we want to address in really helpful and appropriate ways. So the major point of an FBA is really to not blame the child, but to really determine why they're doing these behaviors and to give them a healthy response to get those, uh, those needs met. And that settings play a role in those behaviors and there's additional triggers that can cause these behaviors. And so we need to look more comprehensively and help the students um, make some healthier choices with appropriate behaviors.